And I want to introduce to you this evening our president, Isabel Gray, our vice president, Connor Tree, and our event coordinator, Katie Cochran. How we doing? How we doing? All right, so I'm, I'm Connor Tree, as you might have guessed. Hi, I'm Isabel. Hi, I'm Katie. And um, I'm president, he's vice president, she's my coordinator, and we have put this lovely event on for you this evening with the help of your talented students. So, um, Holiday Benefit is a, pro a program, no, it's not a program. <laughs> it's an event we put on every year to literally benefit um, our adoptive family. And the adoptive family is through, uh, is it Richstone? Yeah, yeah. Richstone's uh, adoptive family program, which is basically where drama gets a family um, who's impoverished or disadvantaged at this time and we provide them with cans for food and we buy them um, things like toiletries and personal hygiene and clothes and whatever they put on their list and a few toys for their kids because they always have kids and your uh, ticket money directly goes to the money we use to pay for these items that we can donate at this time of year, which is extremely special to us, being able to give back to the community and reach out to these people. So thank you for paying and thank you for coming to watch the Holiday Benefit. Yeah. Enjoy. Um, and also, there's snacks in the lobby that you can, or lobby, it's a hallway this time, but um, you can eat them during the intermission, but please don't bring them in here. Cool. And with that, enjoy the Holiday Benefit Show.
Hi, my name is Stephanie Sala, and I will be. Uh... Okay. Stand by one second. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Okay, you're back to normal. You got it, baby. Yeah. Uh, so, hi. My name is uh, Stephanie Sala. I'll be singing for you today. Um, you know, it was supposed to be me and Sophie, but Sophie couldn't make it. She had to leave early. I don't know why. Leprosy, I don't know. But, uh, so, uh, I guess it'll just be me. We had this band. It's called Brought to You by the Hall. It was, it, it, it was a thing. But, um, okay. I guess I could just... Uh, I'll start singing now. Okay. Uh, uh, Good job. 
Denominational household. My mother's side of the family is Jewish. My father's side of the family is Catholic. Um, their families do not get along. <laughs> During the holidays, there's a lovely tradition of ignoring our relatives. <laughs> but um, in the end, the holidays are really about you know togetherness, coming together, and our our neighborhood really embodies this. Every year we have a uh, we have a holiday party. Everyone gets together. The adults drink. The kids are bored. It's good times. <laughs> um, a few years back, we stopped allowing kids at these parties and. Um, I'm kind of the reason why. So, I was about 10 years old, you know, short little baby Parker with hair, it's way too long. And um, I'm walking around the house that it's at, I'm bored, I'm looking for something to do, and I spot an eggnog table. And I'm thinking, oh, I like eggnog. Now what I did not know then is that eggnog is usually alcoholic. So, I go over, pour myself a glass, have a sip. Tastes a bit funny, but you know, it's good enough, it's eggnog, so I think I knock back Four more of those before I started the class. I did not see the bottle of rum standing right next to it. The night gets a little bit more interesting from then. So I'm, I'm stumbling around a little bit later, going up to these rich white parents going, Hey! I want a Nintendo Wii for Christmas. <laughs> Just generally making a fool of myself. And I'm not sure how they didn't notice I was absolutely drunk unless they themselves were way drunker or I was a really, really weird kid, which is very possible. <laughs> Look at me. But uh, a little bit later in the night, I'm playing video games with the neighborhood kids. And I look over to him and I'm just like, Hey, I don't feel so good. And then I pass out. <laughs> and I don't remember the rest of the night, really. It's, it's blurry, blurry. I think I walked around a bit more made a fool of myself, yelled at people for no other reason than I just wanted to yell. But uh, that's the reason we don't allow kids to Christmas parties anymore. Thank you very much.
I've noticed that I couldn't really appreciate all the love and joy this time of season has to give. Of course, I love putting up the decorations with my family, listening to holiday music, but it just didn't feel right, and I didn't know why. Why I couldn't have the same love I had in the past until now. It's because you aren't here. You aren't here to put on stupid holiday movies or to make us carol, singing Silent Night until our throats hurt. You aren't there to tuck me in under the fuzzy blanket when my cousins are outside playing some sport in the snow I don't even care about. You aren't there. And to me, you are Christmas. So Christmas isn't there. And I miss your ability to talk to anyone and make them feel like they're the most loved person in this world. And that's the feeling that the holidays are to me. And without you there to give it, there's a hole in the holiday spirit. I miss going to Dairy Queen three times in one day or just aimlessly driving around town looking at holiday decorations. I miss you. And we try and recreate these traditions every year since, but it's not the same. So one day, I hope I can love this season the way I used to. But until then, I'll just love our memories instead. Happy holidays, Uppa. A merry little Christmas Let your heart be light From now on Our troubles will be out of sight Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yule tide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Faithful friends who are dear to us Gather near to us once more Through the years we all will be together If the fates allow Hang the shining star upon the highest bough, and have yourself a merry little Christmas now. Thank you, thank you. Happy holidays, everybody.
Dear Mrs. Claus, ever since you left me for the Easter Bunny, <laughs> my life has become utterly meaningless. Without you, the North Pole truly is the loneliest place in the world. Without you by my side, there's been no one to keep me on my diet. <laughs> I've gorged upon cookies and milk. I even stole Rudolph's carrots. I even ate the gingerbread house next door. The neighbors were so furious that they shaved off my beard while I cried myself to sleep last night. <laughs> I've gotten so big that the reindeer have developed back problems. <laughs> the sleigh has exceeded mass capacity, and I don't think I'm going to be able to clear the Rockies this Christmas. <laughs> and I can't stop drinking. <laughs> I've been going to Eggnog Anonymous, <laughs> but they just aren't helping. And I hesitate to mention how devastated the elves have been. They keep asking about you, but I just don't know what to tell them. So, as you can tell, without you, my life has been, my life has been <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Please come back to me. I don't care if you're naughty or nice. There's no one I want underneath my mistletoe. Please come home. Sincerely yours, Santa. <laughs> Wait, before we do that, do oh, we yeah. have a chair, like, 
in this room. <laughs> Somewhere? Well, let's go take some We'll figure that out. Somewhere hey guys, well, thank you to chair. I'm going to tell you all about what game we're playing. And the game that we're playing is Dime Store Novel. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but I sure have. So basically how it works is that we're going to get a suggestion from you guys, what, of an adjective and a noun, and then they're going to make a story out of it. And they just made it now. It's totally improv -ed. That's what we do. So uh, can I get a adjective? Sir. <laughs> uh, yes, you, Mr. Sir, in the back. Cool. Cool. I like that. Cool. And then, can we get a noun that has something to do with the holidays? Uh, let's see. Just say I'm not ready to get a What? Did I hear snowman? Yeah. Okay. The cool snowman. Okay, so there are going to be four minutes on the clock. Players, are you ready? Yeah! John Robin. This is my first novel, The Cool Snowman. Get out of my typewriter. <laughs> there once was a kid named Jimmy Jim. He laid on the floor. He was the coolest guy in his school. All the kids would walk by and say, Wow, you are one cool kid, Jimmy Jim. Wow, you were one cool kid, Jimmy Jim. <laughs> Not but cool. Amazing. So wow. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> one day, he was climbing the rope in the gym. <laughs> and there was snow on the floor. He fell into a into this whole pile of snow. <laughs>
in the world. Today, you'll be tested on your ability to make toys. Well, let's get started. Do I have an Annabelle Johnson? Present. And an Alfredo Smith? Here. Awesome. Well, there are a total of three cabins. One, two, and advanced. You will place, be placed in the cabin according to your level of toy making. Well, let's get started. Your task is to make a toy that a 10-year-old boy or girl would like. Your time starts now. So, uh, where are you from? Uh, the north of Poland. You? South of Turkey. But what do your parents do for a living? Uh, my mom sits on shelves in preschools. <laughs> Favorite school subject? Uh, chemistry. I'm just amused by the colorful ornaments it has. Favorite meal? Santa cookies? No way. Same. Favorite cocktail? Melted icicles. No way. Same. What about you? Fa oh, well, my dad is a professional snowballer, because, like, he's not very intelligent. But I may have sketchy genes and a low elf esteem, but I can build a damn good birdhouse. <laughs> um, speaking of building, can you help me out with this part? Yeah, I can be your handy man, your second half. What you need? Screwdriver. Yep. Uh, screw. Yep, I'll screw you up. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I get into advanced. Uh, not likely. Your toy isn't something that would be enjoyed by the elf trainer. Mine, on the other hand, is excellent. Whatever you say. Um, excuse me? Can the dimensions of our toy be 5 by 6, or do they have to be precisely 5 by 5? Uh, I don't care. <laughs> okay, and then can we mix the paints and the shades mahogany, blue, and violet? No, you cannot mix the shades! Well, in that case, I finished. Oh, and one more thing. Um, do we get to meet Jesus if we get into the advanced cabin? Jesus? Santa. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Your toys will now be baked, judged based on precision, appearance, and cheer factor. Please reveal your toys in three, two, one. <laughs> You are now a level two toy maker. Alfredo, you are now an advanced. Congratulations. <laughs> Frosty can <laughs> me! Now you're a I need to measure you for your new uniform. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Isn't this training camp for elves? Yeah. Going. 
freak!
I got you the Christmas jammies because I don't want to get you presents anymore. And I told you to leave because you're 45, you're really loud, and you smell terrible, and you're still living in my basement. Ah, mouse! See
Great day. Who could that? <laughs> it's a quarter of sunset, and I gotta like the menorah. And uh, who might you be? Uh, what brings you to the synagogue today? I'm here for the uh, community service hours. Oh, shalom. Wonderful. Come right in. So, uh, what brings you in here today? Uh, Oh, no, no, no. What brought you here for, uh, for the community service hours? Oh, so I just, like, really don't like Christmas, so I went into some houses, stole some menorahs, not menorahs, <laughs> ornaments, <coughs> and I smashed them all up. Yeah, people got mad. You got some cuts, my kid. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I'm, uh, so, uh, I'm glad you came today. Uh, well, tonight we're gonna just like the menorah. Celebrate the miracle of Hanukkah. The miracle of Hanukkah? You've never heard of the miracle of Hanukkah? Nope. Well, take a seat. It goes something like this. Around 200 BC, the Jews, the brave Jews, the Maccabees, rose up against their oppressors and took back the city, their holy temple of Jerusalem. And that night, they took back their holy city but one candle left in the temple. And that candle lasted not for just one night, not two nights, but eight whole nights. It lit up the whole temple. And that's the miracle of Hanukkah. Oh. That's great. <laughs> but, like, how is that a miracle? You see, everything in the Torah is a metaphor. So, to take away from the miracle of Hanukkah, the more brightness, joy, and positivity you put in the world, the farther it'll take you. What's your name, kid? Benny. Benny Cohen. Benny Cohen? My God's grace, you're a Jew! <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Not you, me. Now you can... <laughs> <laughs> Will you help me in lighting this year's uh, first night of Hanukkah? Menorah? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Repeat after me. Baruch Baruch Oh, come on, get in there, Benny. It's all in the... Asher Kirishanu. Asher Kirishanu. Lahadlik. Lahadlik. Ne'er shall Hanukkah. Ne'er shall Hanukkah. Amen. Amen. Now join me in singing this year's Hanukkah celebration song. Oh, Hanukkah. Oh, Hanukkah. Oh, Hanukkah. Oh, Hanukkah. Oh, how I love you.